when we think about a fracture, it's either, you know, we're having either more bone breakdown than bone formation, or we're having loading of the bone in a way that the bone cannot sustain, right? Um, so stress fractures and osteoporosis related fractures are actually kind of, they kind of like are in two separate lanes. I mean, for sure you can have, you can have both, especially if you're low in calcium and vitamin D, but oftentimes stress fractures are things like metatarsal, like your foot fractures, ephemeral neck fracture, a tibial plateau, which is like your knee. Those are the a sacral or a pelvis fracture sometimes can be uh, signs of, 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 of a stress fracture mm-hmm. versus an osteoporosis related fracture is more generally a fall from a standing height or less. So those could be things like a wrist fracture, uh, a hip fracture, but not necessarily some women who have a very low spine bone mineral density or T-score can develop a vertebral fracture. So from a pro- inappropriate bending, lifting, twisting, turning, um, loading of the bone. So I've seen that in some women who exercise, you know, have been doing exercise or inappropriate training with, you know, and that's unfortunate. So we do talk a lot about how to you know, exercise appropriately if you have a low spine bone mineral density. Because again, the goal with all of our thinking about bone health is to maintain bone health and strength and reduce our risk of a fracture, right? Because that's the outcome we're trying to prevent. 